How much do we really know about the health of our king, Charles III? Let's delve into a sensitive topic that's been making headlines recently. Over the past few weeks, the public's attention has been drawn to the king's health, more specifically, his recent hospitalization. This concern was initially sparked by a seemingly routine treatment for an enlarged prostate. As benign as it may have seemed, this medical procedure stirred the curiosity of the nation, leading to a surge in public interest and speculation about the king's health. This curiosity was soon to be met with a revelation that took us all by surprise. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves just yet. So, it all started with a seemingly routine prostate treatment. The king's health took a serious turn when a routine prostate treatment led to an unexpected discovery. It was during this routine procedure that doctors encountered an unexpected issue. The king, known for his stoic resilience, was faced with a challenge that none could have anticipated. This separate concern, as it was referred to by the palace, led to further diagnostic tests, which unveiled a form of cancer. The king's prostate enlargement had been benign, but the subsequent discovery of cancer sent shockwaves through the public sphere. The palace was meticulous in its communication, ensuring to clarify that the king did not have prostate cancer, but rather a different form of the disease. The exact stage of the cancer was not disclosed, adding to the veil of uncertainty and concern. News of the king's health became a focal point in the public eye, replacing the usual royal engagements and festivities with a somber air of concern. The king's health was no longer a private matter, but a national talking point. The whispers of concern echoed through the halls of Buckingham Palace and into the homes of the nation. This unexpected turn of events came just a week after the King and Kate were discharged from a private London clinic. The King had undergone a corrective procedure for his enlarged prostate, while Kate had undergone unspecified abdominal surgery. Their recoveries were now overshadowed by the King's new diagnosis. The King, true to his character, began a schedule of regular treatments immediately. His doctors advised him to postpone public-facing duties during this time. This marked a significant shift in the daily life of the king, who'd always been at the forefront of royal affairs. The news of the king's diagnosis, while shocking, served as a poignant reminder of the human fallibility that even royalty is not immune to. The king's battle with cancer became a public symbol of the struggle that many face privately every single day. The benign turned malignant and a wave of concern swept across the nation. The King's health, once the subject of routine updates, had become a matter of national significance. A stark reminder of the fragility of life, even for those who wear the crown. In a striking departure from the past, the palace broke the news of the King's cancer diagnosis to the public. This announcement heralds a new era of transparency from the monarchy, a far cry from the days when the health of the sovereign was shrouded in secrecy. The palace, in its statement, was meticulous in its approach. It revealed that during the king's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, another issue of concern was unearthed. A serious issue, one that would alter the course of the king's reign, cancer. Yet, in an effort to quell speculation and unnecessary panic, the palace was quick to assure that it wasn't prostate cancer. The statement, however, carefully avoided mentioning the stage at which the cancer was discovered, a detail that remains a mystery. This lack of specificity is a subtle reminder that even in this era of transparency, there are still some details that are kept under wraps, perhaps to protect the king's privacy or to avoid causing undue alarm. This public announcement of the king's health condition is a stark contrast from the traditional practice of the monarchy. In the days of old, the health of the monarch was a closely guarded secret. An ailment was seen as a sign of weakness, a chink in the royal armour that was best hidden from the public eye. Take, for instance, King George VI, the current king's grandfather. When he was gravely ill, the severity of his condition was concealed not just from the public, but from the king himself. It was a different time, with different attitudes, where the monarch's health was a matter of national security. But times have changed, and so have attitudes. The king's condition was no longer a royal secret. 
It was shared with the world, not just to curb speculation, but also to foster understanding, to create awareness, and perhaps to humanize the monarchy. This departure from tradition signifies a shift in the monarchy's approach. It's a change that reflects the times we live in, a time where transparency is valued, where the health of the monarch is a matter of public concern, not just a royal affair. The king's condition was no longer a royal secret. The king's response to his diagnosis was not one of despair, but of hope and strength. In the face of a diagnosis that would shake anyone to their core, King Charles III chose not just to accept, but also to share his plight with the world. His decision to go public with his battle against cancer was not just a bid for transparency. It was also a call for understanding and empathy for the countless others around the globe who were affected by this disease. His hope was that his own personal struggle could shed light on the realities of living with cancer and perhaps even encourage others to prioritize their health. Before he ascended to the throne, Charles had a long-standing commitment to supporting those affected by cancer. He served as patron to numerous cancer-related charities, using his influence to raise awareness and funds for research and support services. Even in his capacity as monarch, he has continued to champion the cause, often speaking publicly in support of patients, their loved ones and the health professionals who care for them. His diagnosis has only deepened his connection to this cause. The King's open and honest approach to his illness is a testament to his strength and resilience. It's a beacon of hope, not just for those battling cancer, but for all of us. It's a reminder that even in the face of adversity, we can choose to be open, to share our struggles, and in doing so, perhaps lighten the load for others. The King's journey through his diagnosis and treatment may be a personal one, but it is also a public one. The world watches on, united in hope and support for their monarch. It's a powerful testament to the human spirit, and a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there is always a beacon of hope. In his vulnerability, the King showed remarkable strength. The King's diagnosis has inevitably led to a shift in royal duties and engagements, the palace has announced that His Majesty has been advised by doctors to minimize in-person contacts, thus leading to the postponement of his public-facing duties. This, of course, is a significant change for the monarch and his family, who are accustomed to a busy schedule filled with royal engagements. As a result of this pause, many upcoming engagements that were to be graced by the King's presence will have to be either rescheduled or cancelled. The palace has expressed its regret for any inconvenience this may cause to those who were looking forward to these occasions. In this time of change, the royal family has shown resilience and adaptability. The king's wife, Queen Camilla, is set to continue with her full public duties, stepping forward in the king's absence. Her steadfast commitment to her role is a testament to the strength and unity of the royal family. The King's son, William, Prince of Wales, is also expected to return to his royal duties soon. This return will mark a significant step in maintaining the continuity of royal engagements. The Princess of Wales, Kate, is still in recovery from her recent medical procedure, but she is also expected to resume her duties in due course. It's important to note that the palace has emphasized there will be no councillors of state appointed, a clear indication that the King despite his health challenges, intends to continue performing his duties to the best of his ability. The King's health has reshaped the royal calendar, but amidst these changes, the royal family continues to uphold their commitments and responsibilities, demonstrating their dedication to their roles and the people they serve. The King's health journey is far from over, with many questions still unanswered. As we find ourselves in the midst of this royal health saga, the path that lies ahead is shrouded in uncertainty. What is the exact nature of King Charles' cancer? What kind of treatment will he undergo? When will he be able to return to his royal duties? These are questions that remain unanswered and the world watches on with bated breath. The King has returned to London to commence his outpatient care, a testament to his strength and determination. It's a battle he isn't fighting alone, with the whole nation rallying behind him. 
The king's duties, however, remain on a tentative schedule. The palace has been cautious about committing to a specific timeline for his return to public engagements, leaving a sense of uncertainty hanging in the air. Yet amidst the cloud of unknowing, a beacon of hope shines through. The king's courage in facing his diagnosis, his transparency with the public, and his steadfast commitment to his duties inspire us all. It's a reminder of the human capacity to confront adversity and the power of hope to light our way through the darkest of times. In the midst of uncertainty, the nation holds on to hope. 